Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jeremy here from CyberPower PC. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to uninstall your power supply from your system. Now, this is in the event that your unit is faulty. Now, of course, you'll take the proper measures of figuring out whether it actually is the power supply by contacting us, one, of course, and two, there are little things that you can do uh, to figure out whether or not it is the power supply. So one of them being is once you plug in your computer, try to turn it on, obviously it won't boot up. That's the one main key identifying feature. If there are some LEDs on the motherboard that you can see are lighting up and it's still not powering on, most likely it is not the power supply. That means the power supply is still giving off energy to the rest of the components. So it could be maybe a faulty graphics card, so on and so forth. But like I said, primarily we're gonna be talking about the power supply. The power supply, or also known as the PSU is what we call it here. The PSU is what breathes energy into your entire system. A failing PSU can do a lot to your system, and in worst case scenarios, it can damage some of the data you have stored inside your PC or even the components. So if you think you're having issues with your power supply, do not use your computer. We don't want you to further damage your system. First, we'll take some precautionary measures to make sure that this in fact is a power supply issue. So there are a couple of things that you could check for to make sure that your power supply is working and is intact. So of course, first start by turning off the computer. Um, if it is not already on, just go ahead and turn it off. Obviously in our case, our computer is on. So we're just gonna go ahead and hold the power button and it'll turn off. There is a little button here that you can change from a little line down to a circle. That's what turns off the power supply. Then after that, you're gonna unplug the system from the power that you have connected to an outlet or surge protector. Then you're gonna go ahead and take both side panels off. So you just wanna give a little quick little push down, not too hard, you know, not, not trying to like break it or anything like that. You're just gonna give it a quick little press down to make sure that each individual power cable is fully making contact to its uh, respective socket. There should only be about three connections so one will be on the graphics card, the other will be on the motherboard, and the other will be up at the top left corner for your CPU. I'm just gonna press down on those, make sure those are fully in, okay? Then you're gonna make your way over to the back side. Now this side might seem a little bit scary just because of the amount of cables that are inside depending on what you got inside your system, but ours is relatively simple. And of course, it will be cable managed. You're not gonna be cutting any of the cable ties. You're just gonna be looking in the back. So depending on what kind of power supply you have, we have some that are modular and non-modular. Non-modular ones have their cables already in, so you don't need to check it. It's already connected to the power supply. Uh, there's no way for it to have come loose. If it did come loose and you do have a non-modular power supply, that means that the power supply is defective. So then we would begin the process of uninstalling the power supply, which we'll get to later on in this video. But if it is modular, that means that the cables can be disconnected. So what you're gonna do is just go ahead and press down on the backside and you'll be able to press it down. We should uh, get a power supply that's modular. I do have one. Where is it at? I think it's over here. And to show you guys, to show you guys what a modular power supply looks like, of course we brought one. This right here is uh, Enermax Revobron. Don't really need to worry about what it's called, but this is what a modular power supply would look like. So it'll have different connections here. Um, don't need to worry about what's labeled. You just need to make sure that uh, what's connected on here is in fact connected. And if there is a cable missing or not plugged in, then uh, I definitely recommend contacting our customer service so that way they can help identify what the cable is and where to plug it in into its respective slot. So um, just to give you a little show on how to plug in a cable. It's very simple, it's a plug and play. Uh, they'll only go in to its the spot that it's supposed to be specifically. So obviously this one has uh, eight pins. So it wouldn't fit inside one of these three pins. Um, and some of the cables are labeled. So for instance, this right here is a CPU cable. So it would be plugged into the CPU. Where is it at? I can't find it right here. Let me just go ahead and 
plug it in, very simple. So if you do have a power supply like this and you see a cable missing, like I said, contact our customer support. So if you did end up going through the entire checklist and you couldn't see anything physically wrong, let's just go ahead and start it up, see if you maybe play a game and if it randomly shuts off, then definitely do not start it back up because then you could further damage it because it is in fact a faulty PSU. So the reason why we wanted you to start up a game is because we wanted to see if the power supply is in fact faulty. So if you start up your computer and it does turn on, doing something simple as doing Word documents or even browsing the web won't actually use that much energy once you start playing a game. It starts to use different components and starts drawing more energy out of the power supply. And if it shuts off, that's how you know that the power supply is faulty. Now that we figured out that the power supply is in fact the problem, we're gonna start going through the process of uninstalling it. You wanna start by removing the power cables in the front side of the case where the motherboard is. So you'll do the graphics card. Go ahead and pull that out. And if you have an area where you can feed the cable through, just go ahead and do that as well. Just feed it through as much as you can. You don't need to force it, just kind of plop it through. Then you're gonna make your way up to the motherboard and then over to the CPU. After that, you're gonna make your way over to the back side of the case. Here, we're gonna start needing to kind of follow the cables and uh, see where they lead uh, because one will be connected to your SATA which will be for the hard drive. One will be connected to possibly your fans, depending on what kind of fans you're using. And that should be it. So we're gonna go ahead and get something to cut these cables. Joseph, gotta be careful, man. So you need to be very careful that you don't cut any cables. So make sure you take your time. There's no rush. Just take your time and clip the cables or cable ties. Then we have this cable here. We're just gonna go ahead and disconnect that. There we go. Follow this one here as well. And this one needs to be disconnected in the front of the case. So we're gonna pop the front of the case off. It might be easier to do it this way, except I am short. Ah, there we go. We took off the front. Then we're gonna disconnect the SATA for the hard drive. And feed that through. Ah, then we have this last cable here. This is a Molex cable. This is what powers most of your fans. All right, so now that we freed all the cables, you can see we got this nice little bundle here. So in order to tell if you have disconnected everything, you can just follow the bunch. Most of the time they'll be bunched up. So you can see where all these cables come from the power supply. So we have four screws on the back side here. One, two, three, four. These screws will always be in the same place. Depends on how you need to mount the power supply, but they'll typically be in these areas here. So very easy to tell. Let me just go ahead and unscrew them. So now, after we unscrewed everything, we have our power supply free. Woo! It's like a little jellyfish. After you've disconnected the power supply, now we're gonna begin the process of shipping it back to us, CyberPower PC. So it's always nice if you have some twist ties or something, maybe a rubber band that you can use. I don't have any on set right now, but what you can do is you can bundle this up, helps with the packaging process and also helps us. You just kind of bundle it like this. We recommend you put some bubble wrap inside the box, then lay the unit inside the center. And then of course, put some more bubble wrap to package it up and seal it up. What we don't want is the foam peanuts because what happens with the foam peanuts is as the box is getting jostled around and from shipping, uh, the foam peanut starts to move around and starts to get underneath the power supply and causes it to move around further damaging it so we won't be able to figure out what the reason is with this power supply. So after you got the bubble wrap, just tape it up send it on its way. So after you got everything plugged in, you wanna go through the original checklist that we first did. You wanna make sure that all the cables are properly pushed in. Once you do that, 
You wanna make sure that the little tab on the back of the power supply where you connect the power cable, the tab is pressed to zero before plugging it in. Now we plug it in, it's in. Flip up the tab to the little line, it's flipped. Then go ahead and press the power button. There you have it. Computer should be up and running. So after it's powered up and this is working good, now you're just gonna go ahead and shut off your computer again and just do some cable management in the back. Just zip tie everything up, make sure it's nice and bundled, and then you're all good to go. This is Jeremy from CyberPowerPC signing off. Peace.